Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the news from the science front. Miss doing the Saturday edition. Yes, I do. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm on a terribly twisted schedule at work. But once it gets turned around, and I can't wait for it to, I hope to be back at my usual post. Um, since I did not have a news from the science front for everyone last week, I am doing two for this edition. Um, Earth 2.0 astronomers reveal Kepler 186f, the latest planet in the habitable Goldilocks zone. Uh, this is excellent. They find so many of these that it sounds like I'm reporting on the same one over and over again. I'm not. That's why I think it's so exciting. A planet similar in size to Earth with <clears throat> surface temperatures suitable for water to exist in liquid form has been discovered orbiting a distant star in what is the strongest candidate yet for a habitable world outside of the solar system. It says, <clears throat> scientists last night, uh, scientists said last night that the planet called Kepler 186f is the smallest exoplanet so far discovered and is highly likely to be a rocky planet like Earth with its own atmosphere and solid surfaces where liquid water and possibly life can exist. Again, uh, they're not saying that life cannot exist outside of the way that we think that it can. What they are saying is that we don't know how to test for signs of life outside of what we know exists. So that's why they look for these sorts of things. Um, again, they speculate that there could be a life in the clouds of Venus due to a like, bacterial life of some kind. Because under similar uh, instances, life of that nature appears here. Well, this is good because they've found these. Some of them have been like water, nothing but water on the world, which of course, obviously, could uh, give way to many kinds of life. Um, some other ones uh, with variations have had rocky surfaces with water, but this seems to be the most promising going on here it says astronomers have now confirmed the existence of nearly 1,000 planets beyond the solar system using highly sophisticated techniques based on measuring minute changes in the intensity of starlight as objects pass in front of their own sun hundreds of the other planetary candidates are awaiting analysis <clears throat> however it says most of the confirmed planets are gaseous giants like uh, Jupiter with no solid surfaces which again I th been saying time and time again should not be considered a planet um so there we have another one go ahead and look it up there's artist renderings and things like that it says we're always trying to look for earth analogs and that is an earth-like planet that is in the habitable zone around the star very much like the same as our sun said stephen kane an astronomer at san francisco state university who chairs the habitable zone working group on the kepler mission some people call these habitable planets, which of course we have no idea if they are. We simply know that they are in the habitable zone. Um, it says the planet is the fifth to be discovered orbiting the same red dwarf star, and Dr. Quintana and her colleagues detected its faint signature when analyzing the minute fluctuations in the brightness and distance of the star. And again, it's measured in how a planet wobbles when another planet goes around it. The sun wobbles when another planet goes around it. Um, that's how they're finding these in greater and greater numbers. Uh, friends, I promise you two stories and two stories you shall get. Reuters.com, West African Ebola outbreak caused by new strain of disease study. For those of you that don't care about space, learn more about this planet. Well, things like this make you want to find another place to live just in case. And no, I know we can't get there, but who knows? I mean, who knows what could happen in time? 25 years ago, nobody knew we were going to be do streaming internet videos. So, I mean, who knows? But I think it's important to look into these sorts of things for one of many reasons right here. An Ebola outbreak blamed for 135 deaths in West Africa in the past month was not imported from Central Africa, but caused by a new strain of the disease, lovely, a study in the U.S. Medical Journal said raising the specter of further regional epidemics, which again is another good reason to keep your vitamin C up around uh, 3,000 milligrams a day. Take your garlic, which I was going to do a report on that, but I ended up doing another report on that and three other things that you should eat in my last edition of The Correct Views. You can look that up. 4 Um you keep You keep your health up because that's one of the reasons among others that these regions get decimated like this is that their health is so bad 
I get, can you, can a perfectly healthy person get this? Yes, but your chances of surviving something like this is much higher if you take care of yourself. The spread of Ebola from a remote corner of Guinea to the capital and into neighboring Liberia, which is plagued with problems, look up a vice video on them. The first deadly outbreak reported in West Africa has caused panic across a region <clears throat> struggling with weak health care symptoms and porous borders. Ebola is epidemic to Democratic Republic Congo, Uganda, South Sudan, Gabon, and scientists initially believed that Central Africa's their strain of the virus was responsible for the outbreak. Regular viewers know I don't do these like swine flu and all this stuff that's uh, much just to get you to put needles in yourself and take their vaccines. This, this is worth reporting on people. Using analysis of blood samples from infected patients, however, researchers determined that while the Guinean form of the Ebola virus shows a 97% similarity to the Zaire strain, the disease was not introduced from Central Africa. This study demonstrates the emergence of a new Ebola strain in Guinea, wrote the group of more than 30 doctors and scientists who published their preliminary findings on the website of the New England Journal of Medicine. More, more, more scientists agree on this than global warming. Again, uh, the rumors of wars and rumors of wars, strange diseases, and yet it's not happening, right? There is no vaccine or cure, it says for Ebola, a hemographic fever with a fatality rate of up to 90%, that's why I'm reporting on it, that causes symptom range, symptoms ranging from flu-like pains to internal and external bleeding caused by kidney and liver failure. Its suspected origin is forest bats, and it can be transmitted between humans by touching victims or through bodily fluids, just by touching the victims. It sounds uh, pleasant. Plus, I mean, you, though, it may be, maybe a few more percentage points would live if they knew what they had. Um, they would go and get it, but they, oh, I got the flu, so you wait a couple days, and by then it gets entrenched, and let's face it, everything starts off like the flu. Scary stuff, people. It is impossible, it is possible, excuse me, that EBOV has circulated undetected in this region for some time. The emergence of the virus in Guinea highlights the risk of EBOV outbreaks in the whole West African subregion, the report continued. It says of the 197 clinical cases of Ebola declared in Guinea, 122 have died, including several health workers, according to the World Health Organization's latest update which cited Guinean health ministry figures. 16 of those died in the capital, Kanakrai. It's like the, uh, what's the saint, Saint Damien, who uh, tried to help the lepers and then died of leprosy. Wonderful, wonderful person. Guinea's government had previously placed the death toll at 106. The health ministry said on Tuesday that the number of new cases had fallen rapidly and the outbreak was nearly under control. But it just goes to show that I, let's face it, any region, uh, particularly those with poor health, but any region, at any moment, it could be wiped out by something like this. It's another reason to think about, you know, are there more important things than blowing up your neighbors with drones? Are there things we should be looking at? There might be life on other planets. We need to make sure we have life here with things like Ebola. And, you know, it's why we're out here doing this, people. That is your news from the science front. My name is Sam I.B. DeGangie, and I'm going to flip this show back over to uh, Media Speaks Saturday edition.